Matthew 9, 18 through 26, the New International Version. Jesus raises a dead girl and heals sick woman. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, Go away, the girl is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. This ends the reading. Amen. Oh, good morning, everyone. Week four of Lent, can you believe it? We have been on a journey to wholeness through a season of recovery and healing during these last few weeks of our Lenten season. Today, we are looking at how we can rejuvenate our souls and our minds, how we can awaken to a new, more vital life. In our scripture for today, we learn of Jesus healing through touch. And this scripture passage is unique in the way that it weaves together two stories of healing. The revival of the girl and the healing of the bleeding woman. The characters in this story are very different. We have a powerful man interrupting Jesus' dinner to make a request to help his daughter. And then a woman on the outside who's been deemed unclean. She merely touches Jesus' cloak as he passes and is healed. But the thing I find fascinating about this scripture is the father and the crowd that think the girl is dead. The father interrupts Jesus' dinner to ask for him to resurrect his daughter. When Jesus arrives, the crowd laughs at Jesus because he says, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. How many of you feel like you have been sleeping through life recently? How many of you feel like you have been slowly dying away these last few months, this last year? How many of you have mask fatigue and COVID guidelines fatigue? Do you feel uncreative, less productive, just moving through the motions? I know the feeling too. I've actually told a few of you in conversations that I feel creatively exhausted. It feels like everything we do during this pandemic has to be done in a new and safe way. And it's it's exhausting. So exhausting, in fact, that it is almost hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm sure many of you know the short story by Washington Irving called Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle is a farmer who wanders off into the Catskill Mountains. He encounters a group of dwarves and accepts their offer of a drink of liquor. And then he promptly falls asleep. When he awakens, he has a long white beard. The dwarves and his dog are nowhere to be found. He returns to town and realizes his children are grown. His wife has passed. And he sees George Washington's portrait hanging in place of King George III's. Twenty years had passed. Twenty years he slept. Martin Luther King Jr. talked about this story and used it often. King liked to say, The thing we usually remember about the story is that Rip slept for 20 years. But there is another important... Another point in the story, which is almost always completely overlooked. When Rip went up the mountain, 
A sign in the local tavern had had, had a picture of King George III. And when he came down, it had a picture of George Washington. So, King proclaimed, the most striking thing about the story of Rip Van Winkle is not that he slept for 20 years, but that he slept through a revolution. In a speech entitled Don't Sleep Through the Revolution, King warned one of the greatest, one of the great misfortunes of history is that all too many individuals and institutions find themselves in a great period of change and yet fail to achieve the new attitudes and outlooks that the new situation demands. There is nothing more tragic than to sleep through a revolution. As I preached in my Ash Wednesday sermon, Lent is a time for us to reset our focus. Reset our focus on our faith in God, resetting our lives to be in right relationship with God. Where do we need to grow? What do we need to ask forgiveness for? What do we need to let go of? What do we need to let go of? Let go of so that we can wake up, so that we can reawaken our senses to where God is calling us to go. Because we may have been feeling like we were slowly dying over this last year, but Jesus reminds us through this scripture today that we are not dead. The crowd and our scripture had an interesting reaction to Jesus' notion that the girl was not dead. They laughed. Full-blown funeral rites had begun, flutes and all. And yet Jesus said, this is not the end of the story. The idea that we could come back to life better than before, that we could find some way to bring life back to what feels dead, may seem preposterous to some at this point, laughable. But like Jesus, we need to not be deterred. Can we forge ahead, enter the house of sorrow, and dare to proclaim that we can still exist? We are simply asleep, and we need to wake up. We need to wake up to heal. We need to wake up to move on. We need to wake up to begin creatively imagining a different picture. This intellectual healing of waking up is also a spiritual healing. So as an act of helping ourselves wake up to have an image of creating a different picture, I want you to get your broken pieces of sea glass. Put them on a flat surface, as a mosaic artist would do, and I want you to try different, various configurations with your broken pieces. Even when the raw materials of our lives that we have to work with feel broken, we can get a new perspective that can awaken a new vision for life within us. Move your pieces around. And when you have found the placement of your pieces that brings a spark of delight to you, I invite you to take a photo of it. Consider using your photo this week on the wallpaper of your smartphone or the cover photo of your Facebook page or simply just leave it on a table in your home where you can see it this week. Use this as a reminder that we are capable of reworking, remaking the pictures of what life can be. Use this as a focal point for prayer this week. How can you wake up to a vision of a different picture for your life? This invitation that Jesus in our scriptures and Martin Luther King Jr. give us of staying awake is an invitation to live with our eyes wide open because when we're sleeping we can't see. It's an invitation to be aware and keep our minds open because when we're sleeping we can't think and discern and imagine and envision new realities. It's an invitation to know what is going on in the lives of our community. 
Because when you are sleeping, you can't pray. And you, when you can't pray, your relationship with the beloved community becomes distant. So the invitation to stay awake is to stay conscious of what is going around us in plain sight. To stay awake to the ways we as a church need to fight for justice and put more love in the world. As Cornell West said, justice is simply what love looks like in public. But friends, waking up is not easy. Just like we learn that being a disciple of Jesus is not easy. Waking up can be painful and disorienting. And staying awake, as Jesus suggests in the Gospel of Matthew, can be more difficult because when we wake up to the realities of the world we live in, we often want to quickly crawl back under the covers and close our eyes for sleep. But we are called to shake it off and to be reinvigorated for this life we are called to live. What do you need to let go of in your personal life? What do you need to let go of? What do we need to let go of as the church? What do we need to do in order to wake up to the call God is placing on our hearts? And how do we move forward together as Applewood Valley United Methodist Church as we are hopefully nearing the end of this pandemic? What have we learned over this past year and how can we revitalize our programs and ministries because of this past year of learning? And the same goes for your life. What did you learn and how are you going to use that? We have to be willing, as Dr. King says, to achieve new attitudes and outlooks that the new situation demands. Let's not be individuals in an institution that finds itself in this major period of change, unwilling to let go of things just because we've always done it this way or because we are afraid to dream bigger and vision a different picture. We are called to wake up. Wake up for the betterment of the kingdom of God. Wake up to be the church family that God is calling us to be in our community. Wake up to be the friend, spouse, business partner, visionary, legendary leader that you were called to be. Wake up, friends. God is calling us. We must wake up for our own healing and the healing of the world. Amen.